welcome back to the channel before i get into the lesson guys um i want to thank all my supporters that support the channel i want to thank you all please continue to give your support as i keep adding value to your lives thank you all right let's get into the lesson today's topic will be on cell division and of course the lesson will focus on the two types of cell division what is cell division cell division is the process of forming new cells the nucleus divides first then the cytoplasm types of cell division so basically there are two types of cell division number one there is mitosis and two meiosis now let's go into the definition of mitosis mitosis this is the formation of identical cells and what that means is that the new cells that are formed they are identical to the parent cell and as relates to genetics if the amount of chromosome is 46 in that parent cell then the offspring will have 46 chromosomes all right so that's what it means they will be identical to the parent cell mitosis normally takes place in some types of the cell not all cell you'll find mitosis taking place in all right so mitosis it takes place in the normal body cell for example if you're dealing with animals right the normal body cells example like the skin the leg the stomach the intestines etc and as it relates to plants you do have this process taking place in normal plant cells like those of the leaves the stems all right branches and um, the main function of mitosis is that it it is used mainly for growth and repair so let's move to meiosis on the other hand this is the formation of non-identical cells so what that means is that the new cells that are formed they are different from the parent cell that divides so for example in human being number of chromosomes is 46 chromosome when the new cells are formed they will be haploid meaning they will have 23 chromosomes in them this type of cell division takes place in the sex cells sex cells of plants and animals all right so for example the sperm and egg in animals and pollen and ovule in plants so all those sex cells they are formed by the process of meiosis all right and as i said here is that the function is to form sex cells so basically mitosis is done for growth and repair the cells form are identical to the parent cell and in meiosis it is done basically to form sex cells that is the main function and why they have to be applied is so that during fertilization when those sex cells come together then you get my original 46 and please note that each living thing has different amount of chromosomes all right also remember that in mitosis one cell will divide into two to form two identical cells and in meiosis one cell will divide to form four new cells all right so there are some terms that i want you to understand i want you to understand um our chromosome will look before and after replication all right so what i want you to understand is that for the cell divisions i want you to understand all the chromosomes exist as you can see the title for this um, slide it says chromosome before and after replication let's look at the chromosome before it replicates all right so here we see that chromosome here it has a centromere which is this yellow structure here right and the green structure here is the chromatid so in this chromosome there it is it has one chromatid and it is still referred to as a chromosome all right that's the important information i want you to understand so let's go to the characteristics as i list them down below one it has one centromere and two it has one chromatid the number of chromosome is one so this is one chromosome in order to help you remember the amount of chromosome you just need to follow the amount of centromere that it has pay attention to the centromere so if you see it as one centromere it is one chromosome all right let's look at the chromosome after it replicates or multiply that's what it means now 
note it still has one centromere right but look at the amount of chromatids it has two chromatids and these chromatids they're identical to each other but the important thing that i want to point out to you is that it is still one chromosome so let's go to the description here one it says that it has one centromere and two two chromatids all right both of them is still one chromosome even after it replicates once it has one centromere it is one chromosome very important for you to understand before we go into the divisions the cell divisions all right all right so two terms i'd like you to understand before we get into the divisions also are diploid cells and haploid cells so a diploid cell is the total number of chromosomes in an organism human has 46 chromosomes goat has 54 red pea have 14 chromosomes for example all right guys all right so it's a total amount so the haploid amount for the diploid would be half the amount so let's go down to the haploid so haploid cell is half the number of total number of chromosomes. These are normally produced in the sex cells, the sperm and the egg. The normal amount will be restored during fertilization, which is the joining of the egg and the sperm or the ovule and the pollen, right? All right, so diploid cells would be normally found in the normal body cells or plant cells like the leaves, the stems, right? The, the total amount but they can also be reduced and when they are reduced to half the amount they are referred to as haploid and those are normally the sex cells are normally haploid all right so these two terms are very important for you to understand okay, let's move on all right so with this diagram i'll explain the process of mitosis so this diagram here is a cell or the nucleus of the cell because um, the chromosomes they are found in the nucleus of the cell right so say this is the nucleus of a cell in this diagram here it shows that you have one chromosome so for the demonstration process i'll use one chromosome and the animal that i'll use is the human being so the human being has 46 chromosomes as you can see on on the left side of the screen here it has 46 chromosomes all right at this stage it's 46 chromatid and it's a diploid cell so i'm just going to use one chromosome in the diagram right here so please note that is this is before the chromosomes replicate so in this example you see we have one centromere one chromatid very important so when you're referring to the 46 what will happen you'll have 46 chromosomes which would mean it has 46 centromere and the amount of chromosomes would be 46 all right that's before it replicates all right so let's go through the process all right so number one we said that you would have dna replication or multiplication so when it replicates each chromosome will replicate which means each one will put on an additional chromatid which will be identical so please note this is still one chromosome but it has two chromatids now so let's go over to the left of the screen number of chromosome at this stage will still have 46 chromosomes right number of chromatids they will double we will have 92 so it moves from 46 to 92 all right let's go to the next process the next process is that, is that you'll have cell division and remember this is where you'll have the mitosis so this is what will happen now is that spindle fibers which are these structures will pull they will connect themselves to the centromere and the chromosome and they will pull opposite to opposite end and what will happen is that this this centromere will break in two what you'll have is one centromere and one chromatin moving to one side of the cell and then to the left you will have one chromatid and one centromere moves to the next side of the nucleus and then eventually it will split all right so look down at these the two new cells that are formed now please note that they are similar to the parent cell which is the original cell up here that we started with please note that these two are identical to the parent cell up here all right so look you have two new cells with the same amount of chromosomes in them as their parent so each one will have 
from the example a, a centromere and a chromatid. So what will happen with the 46 chromosomes is that each cell will have 46 chromosomes. The chromatid will be 46 or the chromatids will reduce to 46. And this will be a diploid cell. Alright, so number three, two identical cells are formed. Alright guys, so what you will need to also understand is that when you're having the cell division, the nucleus will break first and then the cytoplasm after. So the centromere, the nucleus, the cytoplasm after. Alright? Alright, so that is basically it for mitosis. And remember that the new cells are identical to the parent cell and the amount of new cells that are formed from one cell is two. Alright, let's go to meiosis. Alright. With meiosis, meiosis is a bit different. And remember, as I said, the new cells that are formed, they are haploid. They are non-identical to the parent cell. So the parent cell here is a diploid cell. So meiosis can also be referred to as the reduction division. So the cell will be reduced and number of chromosomes will be reduced eventually to half the amount so what that means is that in human being we have 46 chromosomes right 46 chromosomes overall in our body cells and what will happen during this cell division is that this 46 will be reduced to 23 in the new cells all right so let's go through with this process a little bit more complex but still easy to understand let's get into it so we're just going to use two chromosomes to explain how the 46 chromosomes will move. Now, the first step in the process is DNA replication. It is also referred to as the interphase. So you have interphase happening there, where the DNA will replicate. Now, please note, each chromosome will produce an extra chromatid, which is identical, right, to the original. Please note that is the same amount of chromosomes, two chromosomes, but each produce an extra chromatid the second step i never remember to number these but the second step is synapsis or synthesis of the homologous chromosomes all right synapsis means that the chromosomes that are similar will come together so these two chromosomes all the chromosomes in the cell that are similar which means they have the same gene at the same place of the cell which is called loci the position where the genes are located is called loci, alright? So, the homologous pairs will come together. All the chromosomes that are similar with the genes will come together and form a pair, alright? So, they'll come together. Please note that this gene here is, comes very close to the, the green one here. But they are similar in that both of them have the same genes on them. Alright. The next step, the third step, is crossing over and recombination of new chromosomes. So, this process now, what will happen is that piece of this gene here that is green will go on to one of the chromatid to the red one. And piece of the red will go over to the green. So, that is what is called crossing over. Piece of the genes will move to one of the chromosomes and piece of this one will move over to the other one. So, what will happen now is that you will have the formation of two new chromosomes. And this is important in sexual reproduction. That is why two offsprings will not look the same unless they are identical twins. But that is why you get variation. You have brothers and sisters, but they are, they are not identical. The only time that can happen is when you have identical twins. All right. So after crossing over where the genes exchange place, you'll have meiosis 1 or phase 1 taking place after where these chromosomes will separate so you'll have two new cells now so in meiosis you have two new cells and each cell will have one chromosome so please note that these two new cells that are formed in meiosis one number of chromosome in them is 23 so if you note the total amount is reduced to 23 which makes them haploid However, the amount of chromatids on them is 46, right? The amount of chromatids is 46. So the chromosomes will be reduced here. So in meiosis 1, the chromosomes reduced. Now, in the next stage would be meiosis 2, where these two cells, will each one will form two new cells. 
Now, in this case now, which is similar to mitosis, is that the chromatid and the centromere will break now. So each centromere will break to form these new, these two new cells, each being different from each other. So one chromatid each, each being different from each other. So here now, you still have 23 chromosomes, but the amount of chromatids reduced. So you'll have 23 chromosomes, 23 chromatids. Same thing with this one. Each cell will be different from each other. So all the six cells, if it's egg or sperm, the four of them from one cell will be different from each other. So in meiosis, one cell will form four new cells. And please note, please look at the bottom here. Each one has one chromosome. Please look at the top. This one showing two. So it's reduced from two to one. So overall, 46 reduced to half is 23 and 23 each one will have one chromatid which is 23 chromatids all right guys so let's look at the differences between mitosis and meiosis so basically when we look at the summary of the two so in mitosis here it says that number one new cells are identical to the parent right with meiosis on the other hand new cells are non-identical to the parent cell all right number two for mitosis two identical cells are formed from one parent cell with meiosis four non-identical cells are formed from one parent cell from one cell with four number three number three for mitosis new cells are deployed number three for meiosis new cells are haploid number four for mitosis cell division does not involve crossing over while for meiosis cell division involves crossing over and five last but not least mitosis function is for growth and cell repair while the function of meiosis is for formation of six cells all right also here in this one this shows also the difference we are the number of chromosomes in each so with mitosis the parent cell is 46 this is an example of the human cell all right guys girls all right, so the original is 46 and the new cells, they are still 46, which is deployed. With meiosis, the original is 46. Each pair, each new cell is 23, which is referred to as haploid. All right, guys, so this is the end of this lesson. Please remember that um, if you want to get the basics of genetics, please go over and watch that video. I, had, I have done it. So if you want to know about definition relating to genetics, genetic crossing, you can check that video out. Also, I'll be, I want to do, I might do another one where um, I show you how to read the Punnett squares and the different crosses to tell the genotypes and phenotypes by just reading the Punnett square. I want to do a video solely on that to help you understand the genetic crosses better. All right, guys, until then, peace out.